Okay, so the video, the recording is rolling. Um, so welcome guys to week um, three of the To Kill a Mockingbird class. Um, it's, uh, I welcome you guys, everybody. Um, Dawn, there's no possible way that you have a question. It's, we just started class. We just started class. There's no way that you have a question. Okay, everybody else, um, who was it that couldn't um, join last week's class? I think it was um, Leo or um, Leo Kim. Welcome to my class, Leo. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure if you're here, um, but uh, yeah, it's good to have you here. It's good to have you here. Oh, not, not, is that you, Leo? Shu, Shu Kim? There was a student who couldn't join last week, but uh, now is, is able to join. Well, in any case, welcome everybody. Um, now, I asked you guys to read four chapters, right? And uh, hopefully you guys hit the reading assignment. Before we get started with class, um, I wanna show a clip um, that I think might crack you guys up. Um, for those of you who are not Korean, you might not be able to relate to this, but uh, it is this video clip is kind of related to what we will be talking about today. So let me just go ahead and show you guys. It's um, it's this uh, clip. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Uh, it might be very new to you, but I'm going to show you, um, and it might crack you up, especially for those of you who are Korean. Okay, let me just go ahead and uh, let's see. Okay, I can do this and then share my screen. Here we go. Okay, and uh oh Can you guys see my screen? Yes, okay, all right, all right. Oh, and uh, I had to make sure that I was sharing my music. Uh, Sorry guys, let me see if I actually did that correctly. Oops. Oh, what happened here? Oh, sorry, sorry guys, sorry guys. Share computer sound, I forgot to do this. Okay. All righty. Okay, so just just a very funny clip. It's a three minutes, just listen to it guys. Oh, I'm so hungry. 미국에 뭐가 맛있지? 미국에는 햄버거나 피자 이런 게 맛있지 않나? 그런 거 됐고 나 한식 땡긴다. 한식? 그래. 가자. 헬시, you have such a small face. What is, what is that supposed to mean? No, it's a compliment. It's a good thing. Compliment. Um, it means your proportion is really good. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Does that? No, that makes my face huge. Can you go it? forward a little bit? More. Can you go more? More, more, more? Yeah, more. All right. More. How's this? Ah, uh, that's perfect. I, I can't even see you back there. All right. Yeah, I'm Evan. Nice to meet you. Matt. Matt? Yeah. How old are you, Matt? 24. 24. So, 92? Uh, sorry, born in 1992? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm older than you. I suppose. Okay, cool. Hey, uh, can you give me some water on the way? Sure. Thank you. Oh, hey, can you, uh, give me some napkins? Yeah. Thanks. Yo, Matt. Can you give me some snacks? I got a deadline, man. I gotta finish this. I'm sorry. Serious? But I'm older. So I have everything planned for our 22nd, 50, 100 days, and 200 day anniversary. 22nd day anniversary? How many celebrations are we gonna have here? As many as possible. 22nd is a must. Yeah, I just, I just never heard of a 22nd. Is it too much? No. Am I too much? No, 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 no. Let's do a 23rd day anniversary too. How about that? That sounds perfect. Yo, Evan, what's up, dude? Yo, Ben. What the hell was that? It's called dabbing, never heard of it? Everyone knows what dabbing is. What is this, 2015? <laughs> Wake up, man. I 
have her text me first. Is he blood type A? Why would I know his blood type? How could you not know his blood type? It says everything about his personality. It does? Mm -hmm. So there's only four personalities? That's not right, is it? Okay, so that was it. That was the video. Okay, let me just, uh, oh, there's some people who are trying to come in. Okay, let me just stop share, go back to the screen. Um, let's see. Whoops, it's not correct. What do you guys think about that video? Hilarious, huh? In a way, in a way, in, in a way. Oh, the, the things that Korean people do, right? Blood types. I'm AB, I must be crazy. We're smart, intelligent. And then uh, we have, uh, you know, the, the one that we're gonna be talking about is the one where um, at the very end, we had the, um, the, there was this person who was like, oh, isn't she Korean? Let's go and talk to her. You know, that, that, that's, that's such a, you know, I, I can relate to that. You know, you, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. For those of you who are not Korean, maybe this didn't kind of resonate with you, but I just kind of want to, this, this has something to do with what we're gonna be discussing today. Now, before we get into class, before we uh, get into the main, um, the reading stuff that we did and, and start discussing the, the, the questions, I just kind of want to show some of the, the, the drawings that students sent to me after last week's class. So I couldn't show it during class, but uh, um, this is by, I, I don't know who this, who, who, who drew this. So I, 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 I just said unknown artist, but uh, if, if you are, if you drew this, could you please raise your hand? I, I'm not sure who, who drew this. Is there anyone who drew this? Going once, going twice. Okay. All right. Well, oh, wait, DOB. Are you, are you the one? Hello? Oh, hello. You drew this? Did you draw this? Yeah. Oh, Eunice, it's you. Okay. Oh, I didn't know. Because your oh. your email your, your email name was Wang Tar Ketirongi or something like that. So I had no idea who that was. So why do you remember that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, don't ask me. So right. um, Eunice, could you just explain to the class very briefly what you drew here? Uh, I just tried to explain, I just tried to show the racism going on in European countries mm. between some of the reactions of European people towards Asians and European people when they call for different, really yeah. different. Uh, no, I really like this. By the way, did you use like a, a, um, an, uh, a program to make this or? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Very cool, very cool. So I think you just kind of split it down to half, right? Uh huh. Ah, very interesting. Very interesting. I love the. I love the how the. Uh, you know, notice how the uh, the cough is written in like a, a a white reddish color. So it has a bit of a a bit of a I don't know very kind of uh, a distilled violence. I'm not sure if I'm um kind of. Uh, describing that correctly. But in any case, Eunice, great, great job, Eunice, great job. I, I really liked it. Okay, and I just <laughs> wanted to share with the class. Here's another drawing. This is by Anna. Anna, you wanna um, raise up your hand and kind of talk about this briefly? Anna, is Anna here today? Oh, Anna, okay. You wanna explain to the class what you drew? Um, I drew like uh the racism towards like um asians because of like coronavirus and right. like how people are assuming just because like they think that um all asians like they just blame them right uh, without without really considering whether you know Asians were actually the cause or not, right? So they, they just kind of point fingers without any sort of evidence. And uh, I've read articles that in, even in New York City about an Asian woman who was punched on the street 
for for just being Asian and, and because of the coronavirus. So I mean, that's how bad it got at at one point. Yeah, no, I know. It, and, and that and there that woman actually posted a picture of herself with a bruise on her face, and it became viral on the internet. And that was the kind of racism that we were um, uh, um, witnessing. Um, this was all, just a couple man, months back, guys. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And then um, I think this is Leo's uh, or shoes. Um, <laughs> I really like this drawing. It's very cute. Um, Shu, are you there? You want to raise up your hand? There's another shoe here. I, I, uh, not not you, Shu. The other shoe. Are you there, Shu? Oh, Leo. Okay, go ahead, Leo. You want to explain to the class what you drew here? Uh, I just drew um, like there is a cookie and um, one thing is a dough and one thing is a bake. And it shows they are no different when they're just bake or not. Mm, and it's, because they're made of the um, same thing. Yeah, it represents, uh, please no, don't be racism. Okay, uh, how, oh wait, what grade are you in, Leo? I'm sixth grade. That is crazy. This is the kind of, um, uh, are you kidding me? Sixth grade? I couldn't even draw this. I couldn't even think at this level in sixth grade. This is, this is very philosophical. Um, guys, I, I, I'm very, I'm very, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, at this, at the risk of sounding grandiose, I, I am pretty fascinated by this kind of drawing. Cause I, Leo, I, I didn't know, um, I didn't think about that. You know, the dough and the, oh. and the baked cookie being made of the same thing. Right. But, um, they're, the only difference between them is that one is baked and the other is just a raw dough. So yeah. honestly, I, I, I didn't catch that, but uh, thank you for illuminating that. That is very impressive, very impressive. Um, who, um, so sorry guys, I know you guys wanna ask questions, right? But uh, I, I, I do wanna move on here so we can get to the discussion questions. Thank you, Leo, thank you. Okay, so um, why don't we move on guys? Now, uh, we're gonna start off with our summary of chapters 12 to 15. Hopefully you guys have already uh, 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 read this. Um, around 16 people submitted their responses, which is good. Last week was around 20, but um, seems like people are actually doing it. Uh, I didn't make a mistake this time, right? The, the answers were not on the sheet. So, um, you know, uh, good for me that I didn't mess up with technology this time. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, uh, um, we're gonna go on to discussion questions. And then at the end, I'm going to introduce the poetry contest that we'll be doing. Woo -hoo! Poetry contest is something that's new um, that I'm doing for the first time in this book club session. So hopefully a lot of people will be interested in it. I will explain the rules, right? And, and how, uh, what you're supposed to do. Okay. It's, it's very simple, but uh, hopefully everybody, more, a lot of people participate. Okay. I want to see who are the poets in our book club session. Okay. I think I'm going to win. I've been writing poetry for quite a long time, guys. So. I'm pretty proud. I'm pretty. I'm pretty uh, confident about my ability. But I feel like there's going to be someone here in this class who is amazing at writing poetry. You never know. Anyway, <laughs> um, so let's go through the summaries of chapters 12 through 15. Who wants to volunteer and tell us about the summary? Dan, of course. I can always rely on you. Go ahead. So I want to talk about chapter 12. Go ahead. So basically, Jim was. So it's the start of part two. So Jem was, so it's it was a shift of time, and Jem was in his puberty age. And right. yeah, and the context is where Copernia pulls Jem and Scott to her church. That's right. Yeah, uh, because Atticus goes to work and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they go to they go to Calpurnia's church. Uh, Calpur uh, Calpurnia takes Scout and Jem to her church and. And, and it was a very interesting story that we, event that took place, right, Dan? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, let's go on to chapter 13. What happened in chapter 13? Um, Sean, go ahead. Sean, are you there? Oh, phew. Okay, what happened in chapter 13, man? Uh, I think I like that aunt. Ah, yes. Wait a minute, let me go. What's your uh, name? Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's at the it's very it's beginning of chapter 13. You should I know, I'm trying to find chapter 13. I'm okay. trying to find it. Uh, found it. Okay, uh, what's your name? Aunt, 
Aunt Alexandra. Oh, Excellent. I can memorize. Aunt Alexandra. Look how she looks, guys. It's very, uh, in the movie, she looks she, pretty, she also, pretty strict. Also, pretty. also, I just want to say that she's, like, I was about to say what she just said. Also, yeah. like, I'd say she's also racist. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about that, too. Uh, she's very, not, she's pretty different from Atticus, right? Right, Sean? Yeah. Yeah, and even though they're sis sorry, sorry, uh, siblings. Even though they're siblings, they come, they have a different mentality and a different attitude. So we're gonna talk about that as well. Thank you, Sean. Okay. Wait, can I just ask something first? Oh wait, something quick. Uh, like, okay, the picture like on number three, uh, the one with some the somebody lying on the bed is that Dill? Uh, you you mean this one uh, on the the bottom left corner? Uh, yes. Yes, this is Dill. This is That's Dill. Dill. That is, this is Dill. Yes. Um, and who wants to talk about Dill? So, Sean, you had your chance. Go on. How about you enlighten us? What happened with Dill? So, Dill ran away from home. Because... Oh, no, he did, right? Yeah. And uh, why did he run that... away from home? Why? He, he thought that his parents don't care about him. So, he right. hides in, like, you know, the gyms and uh, Scott's home, like, yeah. in her bed. Yeah. And Scott was like sleeping, and then she realized, oh, something's in my bed. And she asked Jen to help her, and yeah. then she, they saw Dill, and Dill explained the situation, and Dill just got, was hungry, so they got a little breakfast. Well, uh, and, and, and um, Joan, did you think that it was a little bit creepy that he was hiding under Scout's bed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a little bit creepy, guys. You know, I, I mean, I, I know they're young kids, but seriously, if, if I was, Ju uh, sorry, if I was Scout, I would be like getting a bat and, you know, <laughs> beating that thing. Uh, and, but uh, yeah, you'd be calling the cops. That would, that's, what, that's what I would do. But they didn't do it, right? They, they, they were like, oh, it's just Dill, right? As if it was nothing. Right? But it was so scary. Like, like it was scary. It was scary. Yeah, because when you sleep and then somebody just came, it will be really, really weird. And it yeah, just... and um, I, I, it just gets creepier from there. Because I remember towards the end of the chapter, Dill sneaks in to Scout, Scout's room and they're on the bed together and they're talking about like having a baby together or something. It was, oh, <laughs> no, it was true. It was true, right? Guys, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, right. Right, they they actually did talk about this, but guys, let's not talk about it in the in, uh, you know inappropriate sense because that conversation was pure as it gets. It was a hundred percent pure, and we're going to talk about that too. Um, it was it was kind of disgustingly pure at, 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 from my perspective, just just my personal opinion. Yeah, it was. It was, kind of, it was but... kind of like unrealistically pure, but anyway, anyway, right? Because if I think about my, uh, you know, uh, you know, fifth graders, sixth graders, like talking like that, it just seems a little bit unrealistic. But anyway, um, um, so let's talk about the next chapter, the ending chapter here. Who wants to talk about what happened at the end? The uh, chapter 15. Someone else. Someone else raise your hand. Come on. Don't be shy. Ah, uh, Angela. So Jam had this weird feeling about Atticus mm. that he's gonna be in danger. So they went looking for him. That's right. So they first looked in his office, but he wasn't there. So they were just crossing down the seat, um, going to their home. But coincidentally, they found Atticus in the jail. Well, he was sitting in front of the jailhouse. Right? Yeah, and, and he was there to protect. Um, Tom, Tom Robinson. Robinson. Exactly. And then what happened? What and happened? Then, like a gang of men. A gang of men. That's right. That's gang. exactly right. It was a gang of yeah. men who just ganged up on Atticus, right? Yeah. And what were and they then, trying to do? What were they trying to do, this gang? I think they were trying to, like, uh, what should I say? Like, uh, I don't know. They were trying to, like, fight against this because he was protecting a black man and I guess they were racist. Well, I think the, what they were trying to do was do something bad to Tom Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, they were trying to they were trying to, you know, do something bad to him. And and Atticus was there to protect him and they were getting so angry with him. They were saying like, "Oh my god, why are you protecting Tom Robinson?" And then what did Jem and Scout do? So they, Scout they, ran did they run away? Did they run away? No, Scout no. um um was like saying Atticus hi and then hey and then but then she realized um they were all strangers. Mm -hmm. Luckily among all the strangers he found she found Mr. Cunningham. Well, Very good. Scout, right? And, and that's this is her, right? This is Dill. And then we have Jem here, right? 
and you can see how Scout very it looks very innocent here, and then talks has a conversation with uh, Mr. Cunningham, right? And, and, and that is something that we're going to talk about as well. Very good. It seems like a lot of you guys that you're reading assignment. I'm very happy about that. Now let's go on to whoa. <laughs> let's go on to the next slide here and actually get into the discussion questions for today. So um, let's first talk about chapter 12. What happened in chapter 12? And the main thing that happened in chapter 12 was Gem and Scout visiting Calpurnia's church, uh, which was called the First Purchase African ME Church. Now, what did you guys find surprising about this church? Someone tell me. What what did you guys find very interesting or even shocking about this church? Um, so I'm going to ask Juha. Go ahead. So, like, when they were singing, like, I don't know how to say that thing, but, you know, like, kind of, like, you know, do you, I don't know what it is in English, but, like, you know. It's like songs, where you're, 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 song, you're, like, you're, um, you're actually, singing, like, church songs, right? They didn't have, like, a Bible to sing along to. Right, there was no, there was no <laughs> hymnal, let's, let's use the, uh, let's use the word that they use. It's a hymnal book. Oh, yeah. They did not have this, right? Yeah, very, so very... Like, they had to, like, follow the person who was, like, at the front and Juha, what do they call that? What do they call that? They call that. Guys, have your books out. Go to chapter. Go to chapter twelve, everybody. What? What did they call that? No, Zebo was the name of the person who did this. What did they call that technique where they follow one person? It starts with an L. Come on, guys. Who can find it for me? What's it called? Line over? No, it's 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 not line over. It's called no, not lecture. It's called lining. Lining. That's what it was called. Thank you, Anna. Very good. Okay. Okay. What what else? What else did you find interesting or shocking? Uh, blood type. What about you? Blood type? Or who is this? Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna call someone else. Um, Dan. So they were like collecting money in order to donate to Helen because Tom Robinson went to jail, which was her husband. Tom Robinson's wife. Wife. And yeah. why were they donating money to her? Because he was a part of the community. Well, I don't think that was the one. Uh, that was the only reason why they were donating money to her. Why? What was it? What was the reason for why they were donating money to Helen, Tom Robinson's wife? Re, Re, what's your answer? Like they said that like Helen had three children, and um, like because of that, they she couldn't go to work. There you go. She could not find any work because of her husband, because Tom Robinson was being accused of with criminal charges, she could not find any work and she needed money to take care of her three children. Thank you, Ree. Okay, great job. Um, anyone else, what is something else that you found um, interesting? Shu, what is your answer? What's something you found interesting or shocking? Oh, we already said it, so. <laughs> There's more, there's more. Come on, guys. May I, may I, may I, may I, may I, may I. Who's may I, may I, may I? I. That one, is that you? How did you know? Dude, seriously, change your name. I do not want to see blood type as a name, man. Okay. Okay. Um, there is one thing that I found interesting, and it is that except for uh, who was that? There was one woman that didn't like um Caprina's company, but then everybody else seemed to welcome them, even though they're white people. You mean Luna? Oh, Luna. Yeah. Luna was the one who Luna did not approve of. Um. No. no. Gem and, Gem and Scout. Right. And the last one is, okay, what about what about reading? Were the church people, uh, did they did, did, did the majority of the church people know how to read? Guys? They couldn't read. No. They couldn't read. Who are the only people who knew how to read? Zebo and Caprina. Excellent. Oh. Zebo And who is Zebo? Uh, the trash collector. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what I was looking for. Who is Zebo? Isn't, isn't he the liner? It's the eldest son of Copernia. Copernia actually taught Zebo how to read, right? And that's pretty impressive, right? So, um, so these are pretty uh, interesting and shocking things about the church. Now, 
there's something that I, uh, this number two question is is kind of related to the video that I showed you at the beginning of the book club session today. Um, but what do you think about Calpurnia's modest double life? Is this something you can relate to? How so? So what do I mean by this double life, guys? What am like, I? Um, so in the church, she is a black woman. She has the accent. She has the culture. But then outside, she supports the Finch family, which is basically she uses the correct um, language, quote unquote. Isn't it accent like the? Yeah, accent. But, but outside, but uh, but outside that community, at home, at the the Finch's home, she talks differently and acts differently, right? Now, why is this? Why do you think this is the case? Um, that, wait, 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 Jongwon. Uh, I did not call on you, man. Jinso, why do you think that Calpurnia has this double life? Why do you think so? Because um, she's talking with two different uh, religiously or culturally different groups. Culturally different group, ethnically different groups. That's definitely one reason. Um, Aaron, what about you? Um, so in, in those times, racism was um, like a huge thing. So Calpurnia, Calpurnia has like this two worlds and then she has to, so if she's in like the, if she's with black people, then the black people would not like it when Calpurnia talks in a mm -hmm. accent mm -hmm. that is not, um, Blackish? I sound really racist right now. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. You, you we, we, we all understand where you're coming from. So, yeah. It's hard to fun. explain, but yeah, yes, no, I, I understand what you're saying. And and let's 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 go on to the idea of what I said. Is this something that we can relate to? Because I think I can relate to this somewhat. Because think about it, guys. I mean, I don't know for you guys, but especially for those of you. Well, I, I mean, I can't relate to the same level as Corpronia, but let me say something very similar a little bit very different but at the same time there is a bit of a similarity as a korean right i went to um the states to study right now when we when i'm around korean people i act differently as opposed to when i'm around american people it's just different right and sometimes i feel like i have a double identity has anyone re uh thought about that has anyone kind of experienced that at school when you are at school, when you're around your Korean friends, you act in a certain way. But then when you're around some other non-Korean friends, then you kind of act in another different way. And did you notice that? I, I, I want to I hear from uh, people. Uh, Jalen, Jalen, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Okay, Jalen, you first. Yeah, so um, I can like kind of relate to this. Mm -hmm. um, like... Not with like American and Korean friends like that, but yep. um, it depends on where I am because like I also go to church, and then when I go to church, I try to act like um, a little bit polite and um, I don't know what to say, but okay, so that well, that yeah. translates to mean she uh, she wants to act in a very calm and polite manner, okay? Yeah, yeah, but like when I'm with my friends, I act differently, of course, yeah, that's I think okay. kind, of, kind of relate to this. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's like basically though you're saying that you change de depending on the setting the location then yeah like or depending on who i am like who um who i am with okay who are you with okay okay yeah all right all right gia what about you well i think it just depends on cultural diversity because well after seeing in international schools for more than five years it's yeah. just really common yeah. um you just, all you want to do is just follow along your friends yeah and, just, uh, and, and like fit in with those people and, and here's the thing there's just something that i i just kind of couldn't wrap my head around because you know i feel like you know uh, has anyone been in a situation like this and, and you don't need to you know be too specific about your personal experience but let's say you're in a you're talking with a group of korean friends i have this experience but you're with a korean friends but then this american friend comes along and tries to join the conversation and Korean people keep talking in Korean. So it's just kind of awkward. You know, this, I, 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 I've had so many of those kind of moments where you're like, you know, I, I wish everybody can just speak in, you know, in a language that everybody can understand. But sometimes 
there is this thing about when when you try when 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 uh, and I have nothing against Korean people or any ethnicity or any nation uh, nationality, but you know there is this exclusivity that exists to a certain extent. I do, I have witnessed that, and I do believe that there is a bit of exclusivity when it comes to um, certain countries. What do you guys think about that? Who has something to say about that? Okay. Uh, I want to hear from someone I did not call on yet. Um, uh, Helena, you want to talk about this? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I used to live in New Zealand, um, and it kind of differs because when I, I in New Zealand school, there was a group of Korean kids there, mm -hmm. and uh, they were all younger than me, but I um, talked to them in lunchtime or somewhat, but my best friends came along and tried to talk with them, but they just talk in Korean and they just sat there not speaking. They were like, um, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, no, exactly. It's like, am I supposed to be talking in Korean or English? Yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure most of us, if not all, have experienced that kind, because we come from so many different cultures. I was born in Korea, but I've lived my, my life all abroad. And I've had those situations where when I was in Brazil, we have these people, Brazilian people speaking in Portuguese and then English speaking people and Korean speaking people. Like what, what language do we choose to talk, yeah. right? And it's just, it's just such a, it's just a, sometimes it's a bit of a stress, right? Um, I think it's you, you wanna, you wanna weigh in here? No? Um, uh, yeah, I, I had similar experience as Helena. It's like, it's like when I'm talking with um, Korean people or Chinese people came along and tries to talk with us. Okay, okay, yeah. And, and here's, and, and I don't know, what is the protocol? What is the right behavior? That's the, that's a debate that we can have, you know, in, in, a, in a different maybe session, but what is the right behavior? When someone is trying to join the conversation, but the conversation has already been going on for some time that it's hard to stop, right? It's just, you know, it's a very difficult, difficult decision to make. Anna. Um, well, maybe like, uh, I'm just like saying my own opinion, but go ahead, like, go ahead. maybe um, if like, for example, like, cause I go to an international school. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, um, if you're speaking in like a different language that is like not English, because most of the majority of people know English, yeah. then like maybe like just try speaking in English, like make the other person like not feel left out. Yeah, no, honestly, that feeling being left out, I, you know, I'll tell you guys, I've moved around every three years and feeling left out is the worst feeling ever. You have no idea. When I go to a new, uh, new country, when I went to, when I moved to Brazil, when I moved to um, Austria and, and they, you have these group of kids who are speaking in German, I have no idea what they're talking about. You have a group of kids talking in, in Portuguese, I have no idea what they're talking about. It's the worst feeling. It's like, you'd rather be alone at that point, right? So that, that's the kind of thing that maybe you guys can relate to as well. Right? Oh. And it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. Right? Okay. Sorry. Yes. Like, I had the experience quite before in Canada, but not really by the language, but the slang they speak. Like, I the, didn't know what the they... The slang. Speak. Yeah. Yes. It's like there's American slang, there's Korean slang, you know, there's there's slang in every single country, right? And it's it's very difficult to pick up on those things. But yeah. and and yeah, I think we can all agree that it's 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 hard for us to kind of to 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 assimilate to those kind of environments. And well, but yeah. anyway, I thought this would be a very interesting question because you guys are all pretty much international, right? Everybody who's joining in this book club session. So um hopefully that was a bit of a good reflection time here. Let's move on to the next chapter here. So in chapter 13, I know some of you guys wanted to say something. You can stay after class and talk it out with me. Um, for chapter 13, what do you guys think about the idea that Gem and Scout have to act more ladylike and gentlemanlike because they are Finch? Oh, yes. This one's a very interesting question. What do you guys think about this, guys? Let's start with um, uh, Juha. You want to say something about this? What do you guys think? What do you think about this idea of them having to act in a certain right, right. way. The word I had to say was about like the word thing before, so it doesn't. Oh, matter. okay, okay. I'll ask, I'll call on someone else. Dan. Yeah. So what I think is that they don't have to stay this way because they're quite young. 
and they need to learn all uh, they need to cope with all those things before they reach their adulthood it's but but don't you don't you didn't you think dan that it was a little bit pretentious i don't know if you know this word but pretentious means like you know people like and alexander was telling you know uh, the, the 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 kids to act in a very high manner way because they're above other people you know being a finch is a very high social class thing right it's a very and, and i thought that was a very arrogant thank you benny arrogant pretentious thing to say presumptuous thing to say um, what do you guys think about that what do you guys think about that um clarice like i want to ask to everybody that what is the thing that being like a lady like and a gentleman like because i quite don't understand why like what okay that's a very good question what does it mean to be ladylike and gentleman like that's a very good question thank you um who who wants to answer that benny benny oh i'm gonna give a chance to benny here go ahead benny i think like being gentleman dish and like ladyish means like being like formal and then like not um right yeah, it's like, like it's kiddish like, yeah it's like childish. acting like a princess and a prince basically yeah but yeah. it's different different as the person who is watching that if i think the formal way is like this way then uh, it might be different that your formal way of looking like that is true that is true but i'm guessing that they have learned some sort of manners there is some sort of manners that is de- uh that is from generation to generation there's this etiquette that they have to keep and you know i i, I okay all right all right now here's the more interesting question you guys because I was thinking about this and, and there was one thing that I was thinking to myself. If your parents told you not to spend time with a certain friend because either they're not hardworking students or because of their social status, what would you guys do? Ooh. I'm actually genuinely curious. This is interesting, Ooh. right? What would you guys do, right? And, and, and I've had, you know, not to bash out on my parents. They're listening to me while I do this, but uh, I've had them. I've had a couple cases when I my my my, my parents told me, "Oh, don't don't hang, hang out with that kid because he's not he doesn't study hard." I've heard that so many times. Like, only hang out with this kid. He's a hardworking student. Now, do you guys think that's discrimination? I'm actually curious. Do you guys yeah, think that's discrimination? Of. Yeah, definitely. Okay, who 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 wants to talk about this? Ooh. Oh wow, we have some new people. Win. I want to ask Win. Go ahead. Um, well, for me, like, if they just ever say, like, because they're not hardworking or because they're social status, I would just go, like, um, what's the matter with that? Like, it's just a friend who I like with my, uh, all of my heart, so I would just want to play with them. Like, Yeah, I'm but then your them. parents will be like, well, they're going to they're gonna have a bad influence on you, right? And I don't want you to get bad influence from those kind of students. You are different, right? You have, uh, you, you need, you're, you're, you're not the same as them. You are uh, in line to achieve great things in life, right? And they'll tell you all those things. Now, is that still okay? What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. Alvin, what about you? So, like, the perspectives of the parents and the children might be really different. So, in the perspective of parents, if that kid doesn't study hard or if that kid only does plays, or in the perspective of parents, they might worry because, like, that kid might spoil my child. But in the perspective of the children, they think that that kid is really just a friend and they, I mean, like, I play with that guy because I really like that guy. That's so right. When the parents are worrying about that child and the child thinks that they're just fine, I think there's where the conflict happens. Yeah, that, that's right. But who's right? That's the question. I know there's a difference in perspective, but what would you do? That is my question. What would you do? Okay. So I want to, I want to, uh, I, I know some people are dying to speak here. So let me, let me, Juha, Juha, I see you. Okay. And John, when I see you too. Taiwan, uh, Juha, go first. So, like, my sister is currently, like, a university student. Okay. But then, like, I've heard my mom say, like, like a million times to her. So, like, when you go to, like, uh, Canada to study, like, there will be some Korean kids who are, like, Korean kids who are, like, only hanging out with each other and not interacting with other no. foreign students. And she said, don't hang out with those students because you, your the English skills will deteriorate and you cannot practice English. You know, I, and, and, and I'm just, guys, I, I you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a little concerned about me actually uploading this on YouTube because maybe your parents are going to see this and uh, they're going to say something about it. But hopefully they don't. But the, the, this is a really good question. Is that discrimination? 
is that is that in a way discriminating against Korean kids? Yes. Assuming that if you hang out with Korean kids, that your English skills are going to deteriorate. I, I know it's a genuine question that I want you guys to think about, right? So, um, Jawan, yes, go ahead. Jawan, I, I I can see your hand. Wow, it's like you guys are spamming me with all these. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Let me let me go on to someone else. Um, June, you've been waiting quite, uh, pretty patiently here. Go ahead. No. Okay. All right. It seems like uh, Jimin. Jimin, go ahead. Oh, you just disappeared, Jimin. Guys, I can't. Oh, go ahead, Jimin. Oh, Jimin, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, it's the technique. Oh, no, no, Jimin, now we can hear you. Start from the beginning. Yeah, oh, Jimin, we can't hear you. Wow, Sorry. this was really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, it's okay. You, know, you know what? Actually, it's me who started the technique of spamming your spamming hands. Okay, okay. It seems so, Mr. Like we can't. Mr. We, Tim. I really want to get this going, guys, but um, you guys have to cooperate. Mr. With Tim. Me. Okay, who is that? Who is that? John, is that you? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Jawan. Um, I would rather tell my parents that it's their opinion and that because our opinions are divided, it's their opinion that um, those kids are bad, but it is my opinion that they're good. Um, they might be bad. They might be like not smart and all those nerdy people, but then it's still my choice whether I want to play with them or not. But they're speaking from personal experience. They're trying to protect you. I know, but then it's still... Their personal experience can vary. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Good point. All right, Christine. What about you, Christine? Um, um, from the parents' perspective, I feel like they're trying to protect their child, but then they don't know like what exact situation they're actually in because right. they're not the child. That's right. So they're just trying to um, tell the child to back off from that um, friend. Yeah, who might have a bad influence. Okay, it seems like a lot of people are rebels here, not followers of their parents. But I would be actually surprised to see if you guys actually do go against what your parents tell you to do. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's you know, I've had, I've, you know, um, because you know, it's hard to go against your parents, especially growing up in a Korean culture, right? But uh, and I've had so many of those kind of instances. But you know, uh, these days, my, my parents don't say anything, but when I was used to grow up, they would say so many things about who I hang out with, about who I spend time with. They say, oh, if you want to go to a good university, you got to hang out with the smart kids because that's how you get smarter. I'm like, but then I tell them I'm smarter than them. So never mind. Yeah, yeah. Don't want, don't want, no one asked for your opinion on that. Okay? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're talking about opinions. No, so. no, we can have a separate debate about whether you're smarter than other people like you say you are. Let me just go and mute you. Okay, so um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on, guys. I know we have we have a, a lot to say about this, but we can talk about it after class if you want to. Now, chapter 14, um, this is where we talk about the difference between Atticus and um, Ad Alexandra. How are they different? Can someone, June, I'm gonna give you a, a chance here to speak. What's different about Atticus and um, Ad Alexandra? Do not talk about the previous question. Um, then I guess I'll give um another person a chance oh gosh <laughs> come on june you know the difference between Aunt alexandra and atticus okay he, he muted his mic all right all right um who wants to talk about this the difference between the two leo you want to talk about this what's the difference between Aunt alexandra and um atticus how are they different uh i think I'm not really sure about it because I was going to, I, I'm sure about the last question, but okay. I think the most differences different about it is that uh, I think Aunt Alexandra is a bit negative about being a bit negative about visiting Culperina's church. Very good. Edison, Atticus is a bit kind of a bit positive yeah he was positive or vi visiting Calparina's church very I good think it is the difference at this chapter i think yeah thank you leo thank you leo and 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 someone tell me they're siblings they're related oh, by blood yeah. now why in the world are they different how <laughs> is that possible uh can someone kind of talk about that 
Ellie. Ellie. Oh, sorry, uh, Leo. Let me let me come back to you. Leo, uh, Ellie, you want to talk about that? So I think like on Alexandra, she's like really like Leo said that she's really negative and she does not think why it's like good for kids and she just only thinks what she thinks and Atticus like he was a lawyer so he knows both sides of mm -hmm. like stories so I think Atticus like understands more about how child's minds are and how Paulina is like being nice to um Gem and Scout. Right, right. Uh and and you know Aunt Alexandra was actually say, telling um uh who was it Atticus to let go of Calpurnia to fire her that they did not need her anymore. But um, he was saying no, right? She's been such an, uh, uh, she's been actually pretty strict with the kids and we need her, right? She actually does good for the children. We need her as a good, as a good mother presence, right? Okay, um, Juha, you have your hand up as well. What, what do you want to say? Uh, maybe it's because like, you know how the people are more, more open to how the boys act and more like uh, negative to how girls act. But mm -hmm. since Alexander is a girl and Atticus is a boy, so maybe Al Alexandra was like limited in their actions much more, making her like perceptions really like ne really negative and narrow. But what because Atticus was like more free than like how girls could act, so that's maybe why he was more open about stuff. So they have a difference in terms of how, um, how they were treated when they were young. I see. Okay, so you think it's something it have to do with their past. Yeah, that's a very interesting yeah. the way that they were raised. That's a very interesting point. Joan? Joan, uh, what do you want to say? I also think that just because you have the same blood and you share the same blood doesn't mean that you're actually going to have the same personality and same. You're absolutely blood. right. Because for my brother, I'm very opposite to my brother except for my characteristics and my physical looks like it might happen because your personal interests or personal passions or what how did you uh, in the past how did you really grow up or like what influence did you got because on on like on Alexandra is a girl and Atticus is a boy like most of the girls that time were treated and and it was like educated to be formal well boys I don't think so but still at Atticus was more open for education because Atticus is a man. So yeah. we we well, so you're you're also kind of uh, agreeing with what uh, Juha said about yeah. how they were raised and yeah. how what the, how the influences that they received as they were growing up. Right, yeah. that's what you're doing, and and, and I, I totally agree with what uh, Doan said about you know even if you live in the same house and you grew up together, you will still have different mentality, different values. I can totally relate to that. I'm actually a twin. For those of you who did not know, I'm a I have a twin sister. We live you in have the a same two of you? I, we're, we're, we're two one of minute you? apart. We're one minute apart, literally. Wow. And, and I know, I know, I know. It's a, surprising. Imagine this face, but with longer hair. No. <laughs> That's my twin sister. And um and, <laughs> and we are uh so different. You have no idea how different we are. I was kind of like the crazy running around kid, and she was a pretty calm you know, very composed person. But it's, it, you know, if you see her, you'll be like, there's no way. You know, when we walk in the street, um, people think that we're like boyfriend and girlfriend, which is very weird <laughs> because, but like, I don't know. It's just, I have a question. Have I, you ever gotten like oh, a couple- no, sorry, like, so I just want to say this. I'm definitely not uploading this to YouTube video. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I don't want my sister to watch this now. Okay, anyway. Hey, yeah. Mr. Tinden, have you ever gotten a couple discounts or something because you mentioned your sister? Well, if I say yes to that, if I yes say yes to that question, I think that will uh, dis uh, discount my integrity as a, as a <laughs> the future lawyer. So I'm just gonna uh, dignify that question as with a neutral. Uh, I'm not. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. But I have seen movies in the past with my sister, uh, and and we did pay for the popcorn. So <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, uh, let's 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 move on here. Let's move on here. So. Uh, we don't have a bit of a time. I, I, instead of talking about the, uh, the, the relationship between Dill and Scout, I think we can kind of um, all agree that the, the, the special uh, relationship that they have is very, the purity, right? Um, uh, um, it's kind of, um, you know, too pure to be true, too good to be true kind of conversation that they had. But, you know, 
it, it, it was kind of nice to have this kind of pure conversation in the midst of all this racism and prejudice that was happening in this um, book. Can right? yes, go I mute myself? I have a question. Go ahead, Dawn. Like, I never understood, like, even though I read the book three times, like, I have no idea about the God's relationship because it's kind of hard to understand. What do you like, mean? I, I know they're friends, but I don't know what their special relationship is. I well, oh, they were, they're, they're like kids, and they're basically saying, uh, you, did you know how Dill was trying to say, like, oh, when I grow, I'm going to marry you? That's what he said to Scout. That's what he yeah. said. Yeah, and, and you know, they're kids. They're kids. What do they know, right? What's going to happen, right? Of course, they're just going to... Dan, it's not ew. Dan just said ew on the chat. It's not ew. Come on. It's 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 cute. Come on. It's cute, right? You know, ha has that... Okay, raise your hand um, uh, if you've been... If you had that kind of experience with someone. Come on, guys. Mm. Come on. Even I'm raising my hand. Come on. I mean, we all know what that means, right? You know, when you have like that kind of... Cute little, oh, uh, come on everybody has that first love when they were back in first grade and second grade come on it was not me i didn't like that yeah okay. the boy alina, was alina, alina we're, we're not we're here to brag about who's better uh, uh you know uh, at, 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 you just uh, degraded uh, my uh, like my uh, yeah. I'm booster, I'm booster, okay uh, <laughs> okay 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 all right all right i think we have enough <laughs> yeah I, 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 now we know that helena rejects guys like this, you know, she's just, she's, she's all about the looks, right? <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's go to chapter 15 here. <laughs> so a lot of people are writing on the chat that they're solo. <laughs> oh God, that's I love 15 year old solo. Like okay, all right, all right, too much TMI guys, TMI, TMI. Now, what do you think about Atticus's decision to sit out in front of the Maycomb jailhouse in chapter 15? What do you think about that? That was an act of what? What do you guys, what, how would you characterize this? How would you characterize this, guys? It was an act of what, Jinsa? Go ahead. Uh, I think it was, um, it was sympathy, maybe. Sympathy? You think for it was the, sympathy? For the prisoners, maybe he had experience. Well, not something. just any prisoner, it was Tom Robinson, right? And, and, yeah. and I, I, I think it's more than just active sympathy, Jinsa. Maybe he had experience with it. Okay, all right, so, um, Let's give me more. Give me more. Rocky? Is that is that your name? Rocky? No? Well, when I was young, actually, like, well, like there was a crush that like Wait, 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 no, 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 Rocky. We're done talking about relationships right now. We're talking about the jail <laughs> right now. That, that's that's a, that, we can talk about our relationships. We can talk about our past relationships after class, guys. Okay. Rocky, I'll, I'll love to hear about it after class. That's, I was so confused. I was like, I thought she, Rocky was going to talk about when I was young, I was at a jailhouse. I was like, wait, where are we going with this? Like that, that has nothing to do with, um, you know, it was just, I was so confused. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, someone else, Re, Re, Re. I'm like, I think I was like loyalty. Cause loyalty. Like, oh, wow. These are words that I'm not even, I, I didn't even think about. Okay. Why loyalty? Because like, I didn't think that he would like stay with like Tom Robinson till like the end. And like, he's like really being loyal, like by. He's being loyal to his client. The person that he's, you know, she, she's, uh, he, uh, yeah, exactly. She, he, he's being very, very loyal, right? Very, very loyal. Very good. Very good. Um, <clears throat> and um, Angela, what about you? He was pretty brave of him. Why would you say brave, though? I mean, he's just sitting in front of a jailhouse. Wow. No, because, like, what happened? There were, like, gang of men. Thank you. To, he yeah, tried no to gang. beat him up. He tried to do gang. something bad to him. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. I thought it was an act of bravery. I mean, he's, he's literally sacrificing his life right now, being in front of the jailhouse. Goodness gracious. I mean, that, is, that takes nerves, right? If I was Atticus, I wouldn't be able to do that. Gia, what would you want to say? Go ahead, Gia. Um, so if I was Atticus, what would I say? Oh, I mean, sorry, no, no, no. I mean, just like, what, what do you think about this whole act, this decision to stay in front of the jailhouse? To be honest, I disagree that this is sympathy and loyalty. Okay, why? It's actually the way that he uses it. And also, um, well, Atticus's position is a lawyer, right? 
Sorry, could you say that one more time? I can't really. I I couldn't. Okay, so what I think is that um, it was Atticus's decision was not thick and real. Yeah, there's a bit of an internet connection disconnection here. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Gia. I, 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 I couldn't hear that. Um, if you want to talk, uh, tell it to me after class, that would be great because I really wanted to hear what you said because she said it was not being loyal. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry about that, Gia, though. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay. Okay, who is that one person teacher won't call on? Who is that? Uh, that's me, Noah. Uh, Noah, okay. Sorry. There's a you were on the the bottom here. Okay. What what do you want to say about this? Well, I also think it was a bit more of a stupidity. Okay. Now that's really interesting. Why would you say that Atticus's action was stupid? Well, if he thought it through, he probably wouldn't have done that. If he had thought it through, he probably would have done that. Okay, yeah, the logical thing to do would not be to go in front of the jailhouse. Okay, Noah, that is true, right? And uh, Noah, a lot of people are actually agreeing with you, saying that it was not, it was a bad decision to go. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, right. Interesting. Sean also agrees. Sean also agrees. Okay, so a lot of people are against Atticus. That's interesting. You know, um, and, and uh, but. You know, a lot, and you guys are not alone. There's been people who, a lot of people in the, on the, you know, who've been analyzing To Kill a Mockingbird who actually don't like Atticus. Like he's trying, to, people think that he's trying to be someone he's not. He's trying to pretend like he's brave, right? He's not actually brave. A lot of people have actually like kind of talked about that. Um, John, what, what do you want to say? Never mind. Okay. Um, okay. Yonju is having her hand up for the. Oh, floor. Sophia, is that Yonju? I'm not even sure. Maybe uh, him him trying to be brave is being brave. Him trying to be brave is brave. That's so yeah, deep. Yeah, I think that's so that's deep. That. And uh, wait, is this is this Yonju? No, I'm Sophia. Oh, Sophia, have you done something brave? recently someone share with me has who has done something brave where uh, i mean if you, if you think that this this is an act of bravery who has done something brave recently i want to see what kind of act of bravery do we have in this classroom um chloris what about you what's your act of bravery i was being brave so i raised my hand chloris we need to talk we definitely need to talk after <laughs> class that is no way to ruin why it's being brave okay you know what all right we're moving on okay we're going to talk about active bravery after class now uh for the second uh question dan okay i'll give you a chance dan all right what do you want to say dan dan you need to you need to uh slow down there okay go ahead i really want to talk about question one okay go ahead well i think Atticus' decision is reflecting upon how like, how black people are discriminated because like a bunch of mobs came after he went to jail. So right. yeah, I think, is, like, I think one thing we could talk about is like, if Tom Robinson was a white man, not a black man, what would happen? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeonju, do you have your... Mic on? Finally, I've been raising my hand for around like 58 minutes. Yeah, well, your hand was not up, so I had to scroll down. And no, I was like this literally the whole time. Oh, you mean your physical hand, because I was looking at the blue hand. Okay, it's fine. Next time, use the blue hand, please. Okay. okay um, so question one or question two? Um, let's talk about question two, because I thought it was, some. because uh, uh, I want to keep in time here, but what do you think was so special about Scout? in the way that she calmed the whole mob, the gang. What do you guys, what do you think about that? I think because she was foolish, she literally defended Atticus. Like she was it's, Yeah, she, she just jumped into a random mob of people without knowing who they were and without considering the risk it would put her in. Uh-huh. Some what? people would say that is brave, but I think that's more of stupidity. I don't think it's brave, but I would describe it as innocent. What would you think about that? 
Yeah, so like, I think that's something that only a child can do. Uh huh. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah, really? so I think that's what helped Mr. Cunningham and the others like realize it because um, they realized that like um, there was sort of this purity and yeah. that maybe like they didn't have to do this, I that's guess. Right. That's right. That's right. And 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 uh, Yeonju, thank you. I, and uh, make sure that you use make use of the blue hand, okay? Now, uh, starting next class as well. What is the mob herd mentality? That's something that I think we saw in front of the jailhouse guys. There's there's something about a mob herd mentality or what we call a crowd behavior. What is that? Does anyone know what that is? Anyone want to weigh in on that? I think we see. I think literally every single day I see herd uh, crowd behavior or herd mentality happening every day. Where do I see that? Ellie, where do you see that? So like um, mob herd mentality is when a group of people like stand, stir up and like in government issues or politics, many people do that. So I think we can see those things in side government issues or law laws or politics okay well i think this is the case i think herd mentality it really appears uh, it, it basically is when people act in a certain way that they normally wouldn't but they do act in that way because uh, other people are doing it as well that's what herd mentality is that's what herd mentality is it's very interesting People, act, I've done it too. I've been part of a herd mentality. When someone else, when you're in a group of a team, a, a group, and someone does something, right? Normally, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that, but you do the same thing, just like that other person is doing, right? It's, it's something that we all have experienced in school, outside of school, everywhere. And you know where we most vulnerable to herd mentality? Who knows the answer? Where are we most vulnerable to? Not Costco, Aaron. That's not what I was asking for. This <laughs> meeting. Um, Yunju, what do you think? Yunju, what do you think? Like, um, maybe like a big concert where everyone's like cheering. Concert, like yeah. The yeah, Olympics definitely concert. or something like that. Okay, that's not the answer I was looking for. Yeah, but yes, yes, we do see herd mentality in concerts. Well, come on, guys, think think bigger, Christine. This meeting. I think at school. This wait, sorry, Christine. What did you say? I think at school. At school. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, definitely herd mentality. You know, like, you know, when you're in a classroom and then everybody does something. Now, you wouldn't normally do that, but you just do it because everybody else is doing it and you want to feel left out. Come on, guys. What's something else? Peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. But come on. Where, what are young people these days so influenced by? SNS. Thank you. Instagram, Facebook. Come on. Snapchat. Who doesn't have Snapchat? Who in this room, in this, in this, in this um, book club class, does not have Instagram? Come on, mm. if you don't have, okay, raise your hand if you don't have Instagram, don't have Facebook, don't have Snapchat. Mm. I'm pretty sure everybody has it, right? I don't have it. I don't have a phone. Okay. Clap. Okay, guys, we need to clap about this. This is this is crazy. You guys should deserve an award. That is, I know Dan has nothing. Because he told me that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he's complained about it uh, several times here. Um, so, yeah, we see ment uh, herd mentality almost every day on the internet. Now, I think that's the thing, guys. You know, this, we, we are exposed to so much herd mentality, just like how these men, these gang of men who were ganging up on Atticus, they were acting in the way that they were acting, right? None of them, they knew what they were doing. But then until Scout actually called out Mr. Cunningham's name, and, you know, the way that she broke up that herd mentality was interesting, right? Because she called out his name amongst that whole crowd by identifying a certain individual among that crowd, she was able to break it up, right? And also to make him recognize, because what did she talk about? She was talking about his son, Walter Cunningham, right? So by talking about his son, she made him realize that he's just the father, just like Atticus is. Right? And that was the kind of purity that we saw behind that scene, that event that took place in front of the jailhouse. And I thought that was very special, right? So I think uh, hopefully you guys definitely picked up on that, right? And now understand that situation, okay? So uh, we're already past 10 here. I, I, wanna, I wanna end, uh, first of all, with the, uh, the, the poetry contest, guys, that we'll, we'll be doing. This poetry contest is due next week, okay? 
and the theme is going to be on prejudice, okay? Prejudice. Prejudice is defined according to the dictionary as preconceived notions. It's, it's basically these um, notions that you, uh, 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 preconceived means like you have these um, um, like biased perspective about someone without any sort of evidence or uh, any observation. That's what prejudice is. It's when you make a certain judgment without any sort of evidence, right? Um, right, in Korean, we have we say pyongyun, right? Or something like that, right? So I want you guys to write either a poem or a haiku about a prejudice that can be based on your own personal experience or from the novel, right? The poem must be between eight to 12 lines, okay? Eight to 12 lines with a certain rhyming structure an AB, AB rhyming structure or an AABB writing structure, whatever it is, right? It's fine with me. Um, and please hand in the poem to me, um, my email at duhocho at gmail.com. Uh, by Wednesday, 23rd of December, 3 p.m., okay? And yeah, good luck uh, and, and be creative as possible. I'll, I'll show you an example. This is, some, uh, this is something that I found on the internet. I did not write this, but this is a poem that says, I am Atticus Finch, right? And you can see that there is a bit of a rhyming structure here. I am a kind and understanding man. I, I wonder about how my children will grow up. I hear people criticize my parenting style. I see people being persecuted for their race and beliefs. I want a better world for my children. I am a kind and understanding man. Notice how we have repetition of the I here at the very beginning of every single line. Notice how this uh, poet uh, repeated this, I am a kind and understanding man, right? So this is the kind of thing I want to be seeing. Uh, this is just an example, right? Uh, and, and hopefully we'll see some very good results. I'll, I'll try to participate as well, okay? So um, hopefully you guys have a, a good idea of, uh, and hopefully everybody, fingers crossed, a lot of people participate. And um, that is pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for joining. Uh, this video will or will not be going on YouTube, but uh, we'll see. And uh, please make sure to sh submit your um, week four short answer questions by next Wednesday, 3 p.m. If you want to review the book club session, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll upload it on YouTube. Um, and just make my, I'm just you gonna can't make. Just blame us if you fail to become a lawyer next. Yeah, time. okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll, do, I'll, I'll choose a different profession. I can survive. You know, I don't need to be. <laughs> yeah, uh, and if you have any questions, send me an email, guys. And uh, we also have an off office hours with Tutor Tim thing um, uh, on Kakao. Um, I'll just kind of put up the link here. Um, it is kind of hectic at times but uh people do sometimes um, <laughs> due to certain people it, it may be a little bit hectic but uh it's uh, up to you um so, the history teacher the history teacher no the history teacher is 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 fine most of the time no um, it's really uh, to uh, because of other people but uh yeah this is the link <laughs> for the cacao group that if you want to join and ask questions um to me or other classmates okay and uh yeah that'll be that'll be all all right so um, thank you guys once again. Um, and uh, yeah, keep calm and read To Kill a Mockingbird, just like we've always been doing. Thank you guys. So, thank you guys. I'll, 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 meet, I'll, I'll mute your mics now um, so everybody can um, speak up. Thank you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh, can I just say something? I can't wait. Oh,